I hope you guys are all okay and all good. Welcome to another video. My name is George. For those of you who don't know, feel free to subscribe down below if you're not already. And this is like my most recent reads. You may ask why I'm standing up. You may ask why my hair is done and why I'm wearing a shirt. And all I have to say to that is, that's a stupid question. I was doing some like acting work stuff. So I like had this whole setup and I needed a blank wall. So instead of like, getting myself in front of my bookshelves and like doing that setup for this video, I thought I'm just gonna stand up, put my box of happy things here, which is a lovely gift from my lovely friend Katie for when I'm feeling sad and a moomin and my RuPaul print and print poster, I don't know, season six RuPaul. And I thought I would just get into it. So these are the six books that I have read most recently, as I've mentioned in my last two Five Happy Things videos, I have been reading a lot more lately because I've had time because we're quarantined. So these are my quarantine reads, my lockdown lit, my I can't go outside, so I'm gonna sit and read books. They just trip off the tongue, don't they? The first book that I read was Me, Myself and Him by Chris Tebbett. I bought this book in Barnes and Noble, in, nope, in Books A Million, in Florida when I was out there with Jordan. There is a video that actually shows us going to the bookshop. I'll link it down below. It's really, really fun. It's essentially like me struggling to know what not to buy because I wanted to buy everything and Jordan being irritated by the fact that I would not leave the bookshop. So Me, Myself and Him is the story of a guy called Chris Schweitzer who right at the beginning of the book, he's doing whippets, which is whipped cream, hence the whipped cream cans. And um, he falls down and he smacks his nose on the pavement. And um, I don't think he breaks his nose. I think he just damages his face a little bit. Then his timeline splits in two. In one timeline, his mum and dad finds out and his dad ships him off over to California where he lives so that he can keep an eye on him and make sure that he is a trustworthy enough boy to have his college tuition paid for. And in the other timeline, he lies about it and he ends up spending the summer um, with his friends in his hometown. So it's these two different timelines that run concurrently. It's a really interesting concept. I really enjoyed this book. I thought it was really fun. I thought it was a great concept. Well executed, it was really funny. I really enjoyed it. I didn't know what to expect going in. Like conceptually, I loved the idea. Um, and it's an idea that I've played around with myself because it sounds like a really fun thing to do, even though it's like, I can imagine, well actually no, I know because I've tried to plan it. It's an absolute ball ache to do something like this because you're trying to like make these two timelines run and work at the same time. And it's really interesting when you see like the little nods to each timeline within. So like you see some things that still happened because you couldn't stop them and other things that didn't happen anymore because it was a different timeline. And it's really, really interesting. It's a fascinating book and I really, really enjoyed it. So this, that's a fun idea. We're gonna keep that. The next book that I read was a Jordan choice. When I am stuck to know what to read, because I have so many books. This is such a first world problem. I have so many books. <laughs> because I've got so many books, I sometimes will sit and I'll look at my shelves and it will take me like a solid half an hour before I take a book off the shelf and decide what I'm gonna read. And then sometimes I don't even end up reading it because I'm just like, eh. So when I don't know what to read, I will go and get Jordan and I'll make him come in here and be like, pick what book I'm gonna read. And like, he doesn't have an emotional attachment to any of the books on these shelves. So like, he can look at it and pick something and be like, read that. And like, whereas I, every single book on this shelf, I know sort of what it's about. So it's hard for me to pick one because like, I, it, it's like, am I in the mood for that? I don't know. Whereas if Jordan's like, read that, I'll just do it. So anyway, the book that he picked was Noah Can't Even by Simon James Green. Can't believe I've not already read this, if I'm entirely honest with you, because I mean, I loved Alex in Wonderland when I read that. I actually read this when it came in on submission when I worked in publishing. So I read a very, very, early version of it and I really enjoyed it. So maybe that's why I've been holding off because I feel like I've sort of read it, but really I haven't. I really enjoy this. I absolutely burned through it. I think it's a fantastic book. It's about a boy called Noah who is the most awkward teenager you will ever meet in your entire life. It's so cringe. Like the whole book is so cringe. And he, it's him and his best friend Harry against the world. He has an embarrassing mum. It's a whole big thing. But then his friend Harry kisses him at a party and tells him that he loves him and it throws his entire life into a loop. And he doesn't know who he is and he doesn't know how to feel about it. And it's a whole big thing. It's so fantastic. It's so funny and sweet and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I again like I already sort of knew what I was expecting going in But it was fun to kind of there was there was a couple of plot points that I remembered and some that were Still in the book and some that had been taken out. It's so good. It's such a great book If you want some really funny queer UKYA Simon James Green is a safe pair of hands I'm really looking forward to Heartbreak Boys which comes out from him in September I believe and he's got a middle grade series coming out and I also need to read the sequel to this when we're allowed outside again and the bookshops are open. 
The next book that I read was another Jordan choice, um, and he picked up Windfall by Jennifer E. Smith. Uh, oh, the oh the foil on this cover. I love this cover so much. I think it's so, so beautiful. Windfall by Jennifer E. Smith is a book that was published by Macmillan. It was bought while I was there, so I read it a very, very long time ago. And I was so excited that we were publishing Jennifer E. Smith because I'm a huge, huge fan of hers because the statistical probability of love at first sight and the geography of you and me are such beautiful, beautiful books. So the fact that I then got to like work where she was being published was kind of amazing for me. Also, oh, her, her book that came after this, Field Notes on Love, um, I actually got to work on, which was so bloody exciting. And it's great. You should all read it. It's fantastic. But Windfall is about a girl called Ali who is head over heels in love with her best friend, Teddy. And on his birthday, she buys him a lottery ticket because he's 18 and he can finally have a lottery ticket. She buys him a lottery ticket and he wins $141 million. He wins the jackpot. And what follows is a story of them trying to navigate their friendship with this as a thing in their lives, but also with the added fact that college is coming and obviously like having a huge sum of money come into Teddy. Um, it's a massive thing for him. His mum and him are quite poor. So it's a whole... It's a whole big thing. It's so fantastic. It made me laugh. It made me cry. I forgot how good it was. Like, I forgot how comforting a Jennifer E. Smith book is. Like, it's... She, her, all of her books are sort of based on chance and, like, all of them have that kind of element to them of, like, two people thrown together with an element of chance in them. Um, the statistical probability of love at first sight is two people who meet on a plane. The geography of you and me is two people who meet in a blackout. I have one of her books left on my shelf. She's got a whole, she's got more books that came out before statistical probability. Um, but I don't think they're published in the UK. Anyway, I have one more Jennifer E. Smith book on my shelf, which is This Is What Happy Looks Like. And I'm saving it for a rainy day. But every day seems to be a rainy day during a quarantine. So I'm going to be reading that soon, I think. But this is just so, so stunning. I loved it so much. Probably one of my favourites of the ones that I'm showing you right now. No offence to the other books. They've all been great. But this, oh! The next book was another Jordan twist. I, <laughs> when he picked out Windfall, I asked him to pick another one because I knew he was working. So it was like, you're not going to be here to pick my books for me. So if you could pick two, that'd be great. And he picked Transmission by Alex Berti. I've had this on my shelf for a really, really long time. Bought it because I'm a fan of Alex Berti's YouTube channel. I've followed him for a very, very long time. I only just recently followed him on Instagram when I was reading this because I forgot that like, he, I don't know, it was a weird thing where I was like, I follow him on YouTube and then there was his Instagram and it was like, oh, this is essentially about Alex's transition. It's a stunning book that I really, really enjoyed. As someone who is a fan of Alex Berti, it's something that I found really, really fascinating. Some of it was stuff that I already knew from his videos, but a lot of it was new information, a lot of it was opinion pieces, a lot of it was kind of like perceptions of the world at large for the trans community. It's a really, really fabulous book. If you're a fan of Alex, you'll really, really enjoy it. This reminds me that um, Juno Dawson has a book coming out called What's the Tea, which is the follow-up to this book is gay, which is, which I think would go really well with this. So yes, I'm just throwing that out there. I think they're published by the same company. I think What's the Tea is being done by Quirkus, who publishes Juno, and this is Ren and Rook, which is also in Hachette. So they're a good set of books to put together because this is sort of like someone's life talking about it. And I imagine Juno's will be uh, talking a lot about her life, talking a lot about her experiences of it. So you kind of got both sides of the coin in a way because you've got a transgender man and um Juno who's a transgender woman so yes I think there'd be two books that'd be really really great for each other but yes this is fantastic and just give it a read if you're a fan I've read so many things I'm running out of space on my little mini shelf the next book that I read was a George choice because <laughs> fantastic books and where to find them Kai who I don't even think he watches these videos but you should follow his Instagram because it's the most beautiful feed I've ever seen in my life and I say that every time I bring him up but he posted a little like grid of his favorite books and how many of them have you read? And I kind of did it and like failed miserably. But one of them on there was We Are Okay by Nina LaCour, which is a book that I bought while I was in Florida. And I love Nina LaCour so very much. Um, you Know Me Well is such a fantastic book that she wrote with David Levithan. I've met her. She's so, so lovely. And I bought this because I've heard amazing things about it, like nothing but fantastic things. And I said to Kai, I do have two of them. Does that, I do like own like two of the books on there and I'm intending to read them soon. Does that count? And I told him that this was one of them and he said that I should read it soon because it's short. And it's just so, so beautiful. We Are Okay is about a girl called Marin who has been through something. I won't say what. And because of that, she has disappeared off the face of the earth. She went to college early. She's been hiding away from family, from friends, everybody. And she's also not quite feeling herself. It's told before this event and it's told during the Christmas, like as we come up to Christmas at 
her college in New York. So you're seeing both sides of her and you're seeing this massive change in her. Her best friend Mabel from San Francisco is coming to see her for a few days over Christmas and this is forcing Marin to face everything that she has tried to run away from and it what results in a beautiful, beautiful book that made me ache. I was up until one o'clock in the morning reading this book crying like a tiny child. It's so, so beautiful. It's stunning. I really, really love it. I want to read more Nina as soon as I possibly can. This book is so, so stunning and so, so beautiful. It's very short. The writing is so spare and so... It's like, it's... the <laughs> Every single word feels so well chosen. It's just fantastic. I loved it so very much. So huge recommend here. Oh my god. And also is part of me trying to broaden my queer reading horizons because Marin is a queer woman and I don't read a lot of queer women or I read a lot of his gay boys. So um, I also have the Falling in Love montage on my shelf there and that's something I'm going to be reading quite soon as well. So yes. Oh, so good. And the last book that I read is actually an audiobook, which is an audiobook that I have read several many times before and that is Bossy Pants by Tina Fey. I'm a huge Tina Fey fan. I'm a huge fan of 30 Rock. I think Tina Fey is amazing. I love her so very much and I listen to this book so so regularly and this became like a book that I was listening to while I was walking around on my like government allowed daily walk or it's like my bedtime audiobook. I listen to an audiobook before I go to bed usually. Um, either an audiobook or a podcast. I've kind of moved to audiobooks for a while and um, that's the one I was listening to. And it's such a great audiobook. If you're a fan of Tina or you're a fan of 30 Rock, it's right up your street. If you've not watched 30 Rock, we're in a quarantine. Go watch 30 Rock. It's so good and so underrated as a show. It's so, so brilliant. But yes, I listened to that again because I'm just, I'm a mess and I can't help myself. That is the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed that. It's a bit of a random place to do it, but um, I was here and I was standing and my tripod is like balanced on chairs and on my desk and it just felt like the right thing to do. Please let me know in the comments what you have been reading. If there's anything that you would recommend, if you've read these, let me know what you think of them. If there's anything that you've seen in like a previous book haul that I've done that you think I should be reading sooner rather than later, feel free to comment it down below because babes, I got nothing but time. I mean, between working, but yes. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, don't forget to a thumb in and subscribe down below if you want to see more. I love each and every one of your faces and I'll speak to you as soon as I possibly can. Possibly from a completely different setup. I mean, all rules are out the window. Bye!